Welcome to MailChimp Advanced Tools. My name is Jen Wardrum. I'm a PD coach that, um, that's in Dallas. We also have Michelle Foster joining us. She's also a PD coach and she's going to be uh, helping me facilitate some of the questions. So you might hear her voice uh, break into the audio on occasion to um, share with me whatever questions that you guys are bringing up. Feel free to put uh, any questions or comments into the chat window. Um, and you can, again, you can control who sees your chat comments by indicating whether or not you want it to go to just panelists, which would be myself and Michelle, or to panelists and attendees, which would be everybody. Uh, if this is your first time using Zoom and you're in full screen mode, the way to get out of that so you can access the rest of your computer is by using the escape key. If you hit the escape key, it'll let you uh, get to your desktop and start menu and all that. Uh, we will be sending out a survey at the end of this webinar. This is a newer webinar, so we are uh, looking for a lot of feedback to find out if there's things that we need to add or change or uh, things that we need to do better. And so uh, please do take a, a little bit of time. Michelle will give the, the link to that at the end of, at the end of the session today. Um, the session today is going to be covering how to use merge tags, how to do final uh, welcome and final unsubscribe forms, and I'll explain what that means as we go along here. Uh, how to properly forward your your emails. So if you have partners who want to advocate for you by forwarding your uh, your newsletters and updates, I'm going to help you know how to do that well, uh, or how to do that in a way that Mailchimp uh, sort of sets up as the best practice. And then we'll talk about how to use subscribe forms. So the first thing that we're talking about today is the merge tags. And merge tags, I've had historically sort of had a difficult time explaining merge tags. Um, but what a merge tag is, is for example, here, um, I went into how I got to this, by the way, is I signed into MailChimp, uh, went to campaigns, and then went into the design phase of one of my campaigns. So I'm in, I'm in one of my campaigns right now. And the way I did it, um, what a merge tag is, is if you see like where it says current year, okay, my mouse keeps getting in the way, but where you see current year, list company, if not archive page, list description, all of those are considered merge tags. So when we talked about how to set up your template, I told you, you don't need to type in the current year, just leave this tag alone and it'll automatically put the current year there. And that's what a merge tag does. A merge tag takes information from someplace else and puts it into your newsletter. And so that's what we're gonna talk about how to use those um, in different ways. So there's some, there some merge tags that you can use to help kind of personalize your newsletters and updates a little bit. And so uh, one of the places that they take the merge tags from or they get the merge data from is from your list itself. And so if I go into one of my lists, you'll see that there's these different columns. So email address, first name, last name, greeting, salutation. When I use a merge tag, I'm targeting these different columns of information. So if I use a first name tag, um, first name merge tag, it's going to pull that information from the first name, last name merge tag from the last name, so forth and so on. Now you're probably only going to have this greeting and salutation column if you if you integrated your account, if you synced your account with TNT Connect. If you didn't do that, you won't have these two columns. Uh, there are ways to add them. Um, not going to go into all of that during today's webinar simply because we don't have time. But if you're looking for ways to add columns, um, let me know. Send me an email, and I can we can meet together, and I can help you walk through that. Or maybe that's something we need to add to this webinar in the future. So let me know that in the survey. If that's something that you wish I would have done. Um, so this is one of the places where it's grabbing merge data. Another place it's grabbing the data from is the subscribe forms, um, and I'll show you that later in the webinar. And then another place is your profile. So the information that you've put here in your profile, this is where you've put your address, um, the, your, your name, um, she's not showing me. There we go. So if I go into my contact information, here's where it has my username, my first name, last name, email address, contact name. These are other places where merge tags will be pulling information from. Okay, so right now I'm just trying to show you that when you use a merge tag, you're pulling information from somewhere else in MailChimp and automatically placing it into your updates. 
Okay, so that's what we're trying to do. So some of the ones that you can use are ones that I already mentioned. Okay, and they have to go inside of your text box. Okay, so one that you can use, and this is where you find them. So in the design phase of, of building your campaign, uh, the merge tag menu is right here. And you'll see that there's tons and tons of merge tags here. I'm not gonna go over all of them today or we'd have to have a webinar that's only about merge tags, okay? And you can also use this open cheat sheet and that's gonna open a new, a new tab, a new web browser. And it's going to give you lists of, I don't know, there's probably a hundred different merge tags that you can use. So if this is really something that you want to explore, feel free to do that. Uh, again, you can contact me directly if you have a lot of problems with this. Um, I had somebody from a different department, I don't remember which one now, but she was trying, trying to create a letter that would automatically bring over um, the, part, the person's location and the person's, um, the, per, the date of the, of the the date that the person attended an event. So she's trying to automatically pull those two uh, types of information over and we were able to work together to, to do that. Okay, so, so merge text can be pretty powerful. Um, the first one I'm gonna show you is just using this first name and you just click on it and this is what it looks like and now the first name is going to appear automatically from of that partner. And so you can do something like, like this, and then if I go into the preview, to see your merge tags, um, see here it didn't change it at all, but if I click this button, it'll show me an example of what it's going to look like. So I shouldn't have put a space after the exclamation point. That's an example of what it would look like. And so for each person that you sent it to, now it'll say good morning, whatever their first name is. Okay. Um, you could do first name and last name if you wanted to, to, to add the last name in. You just go up here, hit last name, and that would be first name, last name. You'll want to go into this preview mode each time you make changes with the merge tags so that you'll get a good picture, an accurate picture of what it's going to look like when you send it to your partners. Um, if you have those greeting and salutation columns set up in your list, you can use them. So you can use the greeting and salutation. So if you want to say, Dear Bob, dear Jane, dear Julie, you can use the greeting or salutation one, whichever one has that, and it'll automatically populate it that way. And it automatically adds a comma as well. And so um, those are some ways that you can sort of personalize the introduction to your newsletters and updates using merge tags. Um, another thing that you can do with merge tags is, is with Facebook, okay? And so, um, First, again, there's a lot of things that you can do that I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go through today. Um, I'm just gonna hit some of the ones that I think uh, I've had the most requests for. Okay, so this one is the Facebook like button. And you see it just says Facebook like, but if I go to preview, enter preview mode, flip this button over, it actually looks like a Facebook like button. Um, and it just made a wire out of me. Where'd my button go? Oh, because I didn't hit save and close. Okay, so it creates a Facebook like button. And what the face, here it is right here. Okay, and so what that does is when somebody clicks on the like button, it actually, it likes it in Facebook. So it doesn't add it to their wall, it doesn't add it to your wall. Um, you know that scrolling feed that happens in sort of the top upper right hand corner of Facebook that shows you what people are doing? it's going to show it as a like there, and it's going to show it as a like in that person's activity feed. So the activity feed and the wall aren't quite the same thing. It depends on how well, how familiar you are with all these different areas of Facebook. Um, but that's all it does. And so it just allows them to like it. This is also, uh, last week we talked about reports, and I told you, I talked about the Facebook likes a little bit, and I said if people like, if you post your newsletter in Facebook and somebody likes it on Facebook, that's not going to show up in your report. And it's because it's actually talking about this. So if people use this button, this is when you're gonna start getting Facebook likes on your reports. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Another thing that you can do with Facebook is something called, is, a, is actually show your Facebook profile. If you're gonna do this, I would do it at the bottom of your newsletter, not at the top. 
I'm just doing it at the top for easy of, so it's easier, it's easier to see, right? This is how I would add other information in here if I was actually building a newsletter, okay? And I would probably put it underneath here somewhere. I, um, well, I'd actually probably put it after my prayers and prayer requests, um, maybe right before the buttons or something, okay? Obviously, do it where you want them to do it, where you want to do it, um, but I would not do it at the top. Um, let me scroll down here to Facebook profile is what I'm looking for. Okay, so there you see there's two different Facebook profiles. One says Facebook profile plus, and one does not have the plus. The one that has the plus is, you'll see kind of on that little pop-up thing that says plus recent wall posts. What that means is whatever posts that you've recently made to Facebook are going to be included now in your MailChimp update. Be really careful with this because if you shared a picture on your Facebook feed recently and put a comment with the picture, this isn't going to show the picture that you posted. It's only going to show the comment. So if your comment says something like, isn't this a silly looking picture? Well, they're only going to see that comment. Is not this a silly looking picture? They're not going to see the picture itself. And so I don't really encourage using this because a lot of awkward things could happen if you're not being really intentional about the way that appears. Um, so just kind of think that through if you decide to use plus recent wall posts. I am going to show you the one that's Facebook profile. Um, and it's going to grab it's going to grab my profile picture from Facebook as well as the about me section. Um, let me show you what it looks like. I didn't say that again. Okay, so the reason you've seen me do this a couple of times now, I go into preview mode and this doesn't show up, it's because I'm not hitting save and close. So if you don't hit save and close and go to the preview section before you do that, you're not going to see it. Computer's moving a little slowly today. There we go. So it says the name on my Facebook account, like the number of friends that I have. I, I don't really know what the purpose is of that. Um, and then it has an about me. Now, if you're going to do this, I would actually go into your Facebook profile and fill out the about me section, give yourself a little description, and then that description will appear here. Otherwise, you just have this random label about me, and people will probably be confused by that because it doesn't say anything about me. Uh, but it does have this friend me, and so people are friending you on Facebook if they click that link. If you're a married couple, this isn't going to work, okay? Like if you're wanting to do both husband and wife's Facebooks, you can only do one. It's only going to work with the one that you've integrated with your MailChimp account. We talked about integrating last week. And so whatever Facebook account you integrate it with MailChimp, that's what's going to appear here. If you want people to have access to both spouses' Facebook accounts, uh, in the second webinar, we talked about doing this social share. Um, not the social share, I'm sorry, the social follow. And that's what these buttons down here are, these show the social follows. I would recommend you using this instead of this if you want the husband and wife's. And I, and I talk about in that webinar how to set it up so that both spouses are here. Okay, so, so if, you, if you need to have husband and wife, please use this instead of, instead of this. Um, the next tag I want to look at is social share buttons. Sorry, social share links. Okay, so it just says MC top share. Again, I would put this at the bottom of my newsletter, not the top. So if you're doing this, keep it closer to the footer. Sorry, my computer's taking a long time. Okay, so you see you just get these series of icons and a row. This doesn't mean that you have all of these social media accounts. That's not what this is. This is actually going to allow the person to share your newsletter in, in their social media feeds. So if I hit Pinterest, it's going to take me to my Pinterest account, and it's going to create a pin based on the images that I have in my newsletter. And then my newsletter is becoming a Pinterest pin on that person's Pinterest account. Same thing with, say, Facebook. This is going to actually be sharing your, your newsletter 
um, as somebody's post on their Facebook feed. Same thing with Twitter, Google Plus, etc. Okay, so this is a way, if you have partners who like to advocate for you in this way, they like to share your newsletters with people in their own networks, this is one of the ways that you could help them to do it. Probably if you decide to use this, you're gonna have to educate your partners about it. If you just throw it at the bottom of your campaign, I would hazard that most people probably don't even see it. Okay, so it is something that you would probably have to add. Um, if you have, you have advocates on your team. So for example, I have two or three people who, um, who enjoy talking to people that they know on my behalf. Or they enjoy setting up home meetings for me. They enjoy, they enjoy being involved in, in, ministry, in work with ministry in that way. Then those are the people that I would talk to about this and say, hey, just so you know, I've started including this in my newsletters. Uh, as a way for you to to help um, get the word out, that kind of thing. So that's the social share buttons. Okay. So the next question that I got the last time we did this webinar was, when I post these newsletters to Facebook, what happens with, with what happens with the merge text that say like first name, last name? You know, because these people who are opening them now aren't in my database. And so how their first name can't appear there, what's gonna happen? And so you have control over that. And the way that you do that is to actually go over to your list. Okay. And so you have, to, you have to set this specifically for each list. So if you have multiple lists, you're gonna to have to do this more than once, okay? So to do this, you wanna to go to lists, settings, list field and merge tags. Okay, and now you'll see this is where all your merge tags are. Um, you'll see that every merge tag has an asterisk and a straight line on either side, and that is unchangeable. That's how MailChimp knows that you're inserting a merge tag. To the very far right, you'll see a column that says default merge tag value. You have to set this yourself, okay? So for like first name and last name, if I know I'm gonna have people opening my newsletters who aren't part of my contact list, what do I want them to see? So maybe it's something like um, friends. So then it would say, dear friends, good morning friends, good morning. Um, you could put, I don't know, I don't actually have a bunch of examples of things you could put. Um, the example that I saw was valued customer because uh, you know the examples I were looking at were for e-commerce. That's not really relevant to what we're doing here. Um, but you can put whatever you want into those fields. Uh, I've, I've said this a few times now, but that's, that's how you control what people see when, when they're not from your original contact list. Um, this is also where you can add your own merge tags. So if you, um, so field type and label, I can say add a field. And I could say what I want it to be. So you can see there's text numbers, um, a website, okay, and then this knows that I'm pulling it from a website. I would give it a title, and then give it a default tag, and this becomes a this becomes a a column. This is one of the ways you can add columns. Okay, so you'll see I have my gradient salutation here. If I add information here, I'm just going to add it as a column for each of my contacts. Now I'd have to go back and, and edit that information for them, um, but it is one way that you can add it. Another way that you can add it is through your, your, um, your Excel sheet. When you import your contacts into uh, your contact list for the first time, you can, add a col you can add columns into that Excel worksheet that will then appear here and that you'll be able to give merge tags to. Right. Typically, you'll see that they pull the field labeled name and put that into the, the merge tag name. Now I could change this, I could call it Saturn and for then on, if I typed in Saturn, it would pull my salutation out, okay? So <laughs> this, this can be whatever you want it to be. It helps for it to be something that indicates what, it's, what field you're pulling from though, um, just so that you don't get confused as you're, as you're building your, your updates and newsletters. And if that's confusing, feel free to ask questions uh, in the chat, or again, reach out to me one-on-one -on -one if you need some more help with that. Um, but that, that's, the basics of what you can do with merge tags. Again, uh, I'll include some resources in the FAQ that you'll get by the end of the day um, that has 
more information about merge tags, has more different, um, more kinds of merge tags, like the possibilities are kind of infinite. So if there's something that you want to do, probably there's a way to do it. The next thing that we're going to talk about are final welcome and final unsubscribe forms. So we're going to go back to lists. And again, this is something that's list specific. Um, I just mentioned two different things. One is a final welcome email. A final welcome email is for both of these are for people. Well, it's not true. A final welcome email is only used when somebody subscribes to your newsletters or your updates themselves. So you use the subscribe form, they've hit the subscribe button uh, on your archive page, uh, whatever they've done, they themselves have subscribed to your list. When they do that, you can set it up so that they receive a final welcome email that just welcomes them to your list. So they get an email from you, kind of verifying that they've, been, they've signed up. And then you can personalize it a little bit. Um, you know, thank you for signing up for my for updates on my Whitcliffe ministry. Here's the kinds of communication you can expect. That's one example of something you could do. Uh, you could do it however you however you like. Um, that's when they would receive it. It's the event that triggers that email. The other one that I mentioned was the final unsubscribe form. Um, this is a good idea if you're willing to go through the steps to set it up. It's really a good idea to do it. Uh, last week, I talked about how people can get unintentionally uns unsubscribed, uh, and I've gotten a lot of requests and questions about this in, in my private email, is somebody forwarded their email to somebody else, that person hit unsubscribe and unsubscribed the original, the original person. Uh, when that happens, so when somebody hits unsubscribe, the final unsubscribe form would, uh, would would pop up. So they hit unsubscribe, and now this form automatically pops up, and it gives you a and it gives you a chance to kind of say, "Are you sure you want to unsubscribe? This is what you're doing, okay?" And so you could personalize it to say, "Just so you know, you're unsubscribing the original, the original contact or the original person. You've received this email as a forward. Please do not use this feature." You could put that kind of message into this final unsubscribe form. Um, you can also just Personalize a goodbye message saying that you're you're sorry that to see them to see them leave your list uh, Would they like to receive your updates in a different way? Maybe they're unsubscribing because they changed their email their, their email address and they didn't know they could change it um, and So they're unsubscribing or maybe they're unsubscribing because they would re, uh, prefer to receive your updates um, in the mail and so it would just give them an opportunity to Communicate with you that that's why they're unsubscribing and so that's that's what we're looking at. To set these up, you can control what they look like and you have to turn them on. And so the first thing that we're gonna do is go to our lists and then go to settings. And then we're gonna to go to list name and default. So this very first option. So let's name form settings. Here, first thing you see is this enable double opt-in. You can do this if you want. Um, I, I don't like this personally, but there's lots of people who do. And what a double opt-in means is that I've subscribed to your newsletter and now I have to say yes again that I want to subscribe. Um, and so it's just, it's meant to be sort of um, a safety that people don't accidentally subscribe to your newsletter. Um, again, I don't know how important that is. So if you if you want to have that feature, just check this box. Enable reCAPTCHA is for people who are worried about robots signing up for their lists. Again, a lot of this is is, um, is targeting e-commerce companies, and so a lot of this is really more relevant to those folks who have thousands and thousands of contacts as opposed to us who have hundreds. Um, if you think this is important, you can click that and then people will have to check the box that says they're not a robot or click on all the pictures of cars. You know, you get that grid of six pictures and you have to click on the ones that have cars. That's what a reCAPTCHA is. So if you want people to have to do that before they can subscribe, um, you can check that box and that will cause that to happen. Uh, as I scroll down a little bit further, you'll see on the right here where it says send a final welcome email. 
So if you want that to happen, you just check the box. Same thing with unsubscribe confirmation. So this is that final goodbye message that I talked about earlier. And then you'll see let users pick plain text or HTML emails. Um, this isn't relevant really to the forms themselves. This is relevant to how people are subscribing. So if somebody subscribes through you know, the button on the archive or through a subscribe form, you can allow users to pick plain, plain text or HTML. If people ch pick plain text emails, it means that it's going to strip all of the colors, all the images, um, all the, the kind of fancy stuff that we use MailChimp for. It's going to take all of that out. And that might be beneficial if you have partners who are in countries or locations where they don't have access to fast speed internet, they get charged for how many images that they download, that kind of thing. If those sorts of people are on your list, maybe they want a plain text email as opposed to an HTML. So if you're in a context where um, it might be important for people to be able to choose that option, you might want to turn that button on. Okay. Once you've set those options, we want to go back to our list. There's no save button. I found this really frustrating when I first, uh, I guess the save listing campaign. So go ahead and click that save button. Um, when you're working in MailChimp, anytime that you make changes, go ahead and scroll to the bottom and see if there's a save. Um, in some areas, there's not. So as we start designing our welcome email and unsubscribe forms and subscribe forms, there's no save button. And so you change colors, you change fonts, and I spent like 10 minutes one day looking for the save button because I didn't want to lose all the work I had just done. And there's not one. And so, um, yeah, so it, when you make changes like this anywhere in MailChimp, scroll to the bottom of the screen. If there's a save button, go ahead and click save. If there's not a save button, it's probably not hiding anywhere. It probably just isn't one. So just something to keep in mind as you're working on this. So going back to my list page, Again, you have to do this separately for each list. And so we're only setting up forms for one list. Use a drop down menu and go to sign up forms. So you'll see that there's four different kinds of forms here. General forms are what we're going to talk about today. That's how, what I'm going to show you how to set up. An embedded form is the same idea, except you're actually embedding it into a blog or a website or something like that. If people actually see the form, instead of having to click on a link to see the form. Does that make sense? So if I send an email, I'm gonna use a general form and they're gonna click on a link. That takes them to the sign up. If I have a blog or I have my, my own website, I wanna use this embedded form so that people just see that sign up form instead of having to click to go to it. Subscriber pop-up. Um, the pop-ups are, are those things where I'm trying to exit a page or I just went to a web page and now there's a pop-up on top of my content. That's what the subscriber pop-up is. So if you have your own website and you want people to have to either sign up or X out of the subscribe form, this is what you would use. Be careful with this. A lot of people get very frustrated with these things. Um, you're able to kind of instruct it on when you want it to pop up, and that might be the, the feature that you look at. So a lot of pop-up, a lot of pop-ups, you can tell it. I only want you to do this the first time people come to my website, or I only want you to do this the first time um, during this browser session. So if they go to your site multiple times in the same day, they would only see it one time. Make sure to really go through those settings as well. Um, you don't want it to pop up every single time somebody closes their website or every single time somebody opens it, or you're gonna, you're gonna get people being frustrated and not going to your website anymore. Form integrations. Um, this is referring to, I think this is referring to Facebook, but then it's down here too. I don't know what this is. Oh, these are two websites, uh, Wufu and Squarespace. Um, I don't use either of these sites, so I know nothing about this screen. Um, if these are apps that you use, uh, feel free to, they have learned more. So um, I would, they usually have pretty good tutorials. So um, you can just follow their tutorials if you're using those. You'll see that Facebook forums and tablet forums are down here. We're going to try to talk about this at the end of today's webinar if I have time. Um, there's lots and lots and lots of things that you can do. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go to this general form. Okay, the first thing you see is this drop down menu. And you'll see that there's tons and tons of choices. Okay, we're only going to look at three of these. 
And the first one that we're going to look at is the final welcome, final welcome email. Okay, so here's your first, here's this option again, let subscribers pick email format. So if you didn't do it on the other page, you changed your mind, you can also do it on this page. Um, you can also turn on and off your final welcome email from here. These first three fields, you don't want to change them. You'll see this is the merge tag, and this is the information, how the information is going to show up. Okay, so you don't need to make any changes to this unless you want to say something other than subscription confirmed. Which I don't, I don't know why you'd want to change that, but if you have a cute way of saying it, you might want to. Uh, you're free to do that. Just do not change what is between these two asterisks. Okay, you can change the what's to the right of the colon. Don't change to what to, what's the left of the colon. If you change this part, you're going to mess it up. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind as you're as you're working through it. This is what your final welcome email looks like if you make no changes to it at all. Okay, so Wycliffe Partners is the name of the list, and then uh, you do need to change this because you, well, I guess your subscription to our list has been confirmed. If you're happy with that wording, you can leave it as it is. Um, me as a single person, I wouldn't want to keep the plural pronoun, right? I would only say my list has been confirmed. Um, if you want to personalize it a little bit further, you can say something about your subscription to our Wycliffe newsletter, Wycliffe updates. Um, you know, if you want to personalize it like that, just click on it and it'll let you edit it. Um, this is a place too where uh, we would want to change the font. Right. So we talked about having uh, branded fonts last, uh, during the second webinar. So I would change this to Georgia or Verdana and then stick with that font throughout my form. There are a lot of steps to this form. I want to say that at the outset. Uh, there's not a faster way to do it, unfortunately. There's not a way to change the fonts all at once. There's not a way to change the colors all at once. You have to do it one at a time. But just as we set up a template, you only have to do the template one time. You only have to do this one time. So once you have it set up, you never have to set it up again. Okay. The one thing that you want to keep in mind is as you're setting up, your subs if, especially if you do all three, if you set up a subscribe form, a final goodbye form, and a um, and an unsubscribe, so a final goodbye, if you do all three, you want to go through and check all three when you finish because the changes that you make in a one make changes in the others. So if I make something blue on this one, it's going to make it blue in the other two as well. And you want to go to all three and make sure that it's done it well. So if it hasn't done it well, you're going to want to keep making changes until all three look, look good. Um, so you can't have one that's the Wycliffe red and one that's the Wycliffe blue. You have to choose one and they're all going to be blue or they're all going to be red. That's just the way that MailChimp has set it up. Um, it's, a, it's kind of like a branding best practice. You want people to be familiar with the way uh, your updates and your communications will look. And so they sort of enforce it um, by doing it this way. Right? Um, so this is the build it phase. If we switch over to design it, you'll see that you get more options. So all of these, these seven different um, links let you edit different portions of this form. If, again, if you want to look different, you might look at this and say, you know what, I'm fine with it looking like this, I'm done. That's okay to do that. Okay, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. If you want it to be pretty, or if you want it to have colors, if you want it to, um, to have more of a branded look or a personalized look, that's when you would start playing with these different options up here. Okay, this, this E, 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 the, eight, the six E's, that's referring to this background color. Okay, so if I wanted to change that background color, I would give it a different code. Um, and if you remember, we, we put these codes into the FAQs, so you don't have to remember them. Okay, but that didn't change it. There we go. Okay, so you'll see it changed my background to black. And you'll see when I did that, I also lost the name of my list because my list name was black. So if you change your background color to a dark color, you're going to have to then change this to white. So I would have to come in here, change this to white, so you save and close. And now you can see it again. Okay, so, so be mindful of the things that you're changing. Um, if we go, so this is the background. 
if we go to the header, okay, you'll see that a red box appeared. The red box appeared around the section that's going to change. So if I change the header, it's going to change just this portion. So if I make it red, only this small rectangle is going to turn red. Uh, I don't know that I recommend doing that. I personally think it would probably look a little strange to do it. Um, and that's my personal preference. So if you think it looks great, then maybe that is something that you want to do. Okay. And you would change it the same way that I did the background. Um, oh, it's not letting me change the color. Okay, that's good. They apparently agree that you should change that color. Um, this margin bottom and margin top though, what's that, what that's referring to is how much space is, the bottom margin is referring to how much space is between Wycliffe Partners and this white box. But the margin top is referring to this part up here. Okay, so if you want to make either of those bigger, you would just adjust these numbers. Okay, so if I change this to 10, let's switch these here. You'll see that the space decreased between the cliff partners and the top. Again, this is just a personal preference. Whatever you think looks good, that's where you want to place it. Okay. The outer wrapper, um, you'll see right now it has none. And the outer wrapper is referring to the top portion and the bottom portion of my newsletter. So if I give it a color, you have to add the pound sign. Okay. Okay, so I made it our branded blue. And you'll see that they put blue at the top and blue at the bottom. Now, see, I don't like the way this looks at the top. And so I would want to go back to my header and play with the margins a little bit. I actually like this at 30. And I would probably make this 30 as well. So that it was the same on top and bottom. And see, now there's space on top and space underneath. Okay, so that's the way that you can alter that top portion. Um, and again, the color goes on the bottom as well. Um, so that's the outer wrapper, header, and background. So all these three were underneath page. Now I'm moving to body. Okay, so body, the first is the foreground. I wouldn't alter this. Okay, so don't don't alter the color of your foreground, leave that alone. Um, because it's, it's talking about this section here. If you turn that black, you have to turn all of your text white. And it's just not, it's not a best practice, okay? We really want to keep this section white. Um, I don't recommend, you know, don't, I know some people like to turn things light yellow and light pink and light blue. This really isn't a place for that, okay? It's really, really a best practice to keep this white. A default text, we want to change it to a branded. And we want the text to be black, not dark gray. But you can also change the size. So if you want to be bigger, you can do that. Um, and that just changed the section here. Okay, all my text to change. Link style is referring to this link right here. And so, you know, I'd want to change this to probably to one of the branded colors. Um, I don't have all the codes in front of me right now, but I would probably change this to one of our secondary colors. Um, and then, mm -hmm. So that's, that's what that is. Um, then moving over to forms. So this, this is really detailed, right? You can change every aspect of your form. So this is referring to your button and your button is referring to this guy right here. Okay. So, you know, if you want to change the background of your button to a different gray color or to a green or a blue or something like that, you're welcome to change the color of your button. The text color, if your color, if your button is dark, which it should be, uh, your text should be white. If you end up turning your button to something really, if you have a white button for some reason, or a light yellow button for some reason, you'll probably you'll want your text to be black or a dark color so that people can see the words that are on it. Um, button hovered gives you another color. What that is, is your button is one color right now, and when I move my mouse over it, it got a little bit darker. And so that's what that's referring to. I, I don't really recommend messing with this a whole lot. Okay? You don't want to make a bunch of huge changes. You don't want this to go from like red, brown, blue to green or blue to red. You don't want that to be a big transition. You want it to be a small one. So it's probably best, unless you're really familiar with these colors, it's probably best to just kind of leave them alone. Um, that's, again, that's my personal opinion. You're free to not follow that advice if you don't want to. Field labels is referring to this email address, first name, last name. These are my field labels. Remember, anything that's a column name is a label. Okay. Again, we're going to change this over to a branded, a branded font and a branded color. 
Yeah, that's really all there is to change. You see, it wasn't even really that big of a change. Let's just change it to the branded preferences. Field text. Um, I actually don't remember what field text is, but we do want to change it over to our branded stuff again. Okay. Required is this bright orange. Um, you can do visibility, show or hide. When you're setting up these forms, you can set some of these fields to be required or not required. Um, so if you're going to require people to share their first and last name in your forms, which, which I recommend, by the way, um, if you want them to know or to see that it's required, uh, you, would, you would set it up to do that so that an asterisk would appear. Uh, everybody kind of knows the universal orange red asterisk thing means that I have to fill out this field, right? Um, so I wouldn't play with this. Go ahead and leave this alone. Required legend. Again, just go ahead and ignore this. It's it's done well already. Um, help task. I wouldn't. I don't suggest messing with these fields. Okay, you can, but it's really best to just leave them at the default settings. Monkey rewards. That's referring to this Mailchimp thing at the bottom. Uh, we talked about this in the Mailchimp campaigns webinar. You want to make sure to um, just pick the one that you want. If you're if you're fine with the one that's already there, you don't have to change it. If you want to, you can. Okay. Now they go ahead. This is things that's going to change across forms. Okay. So when I go into my next forms, it's going to look a little bit like this. And that's all you do. So that set up my my final welcome email. Um, Again, if you want to personalize it, this is the place where you can personalize your text, your text a little bit. But that's all there is to it. Um, so let's switch over. Again, there's no save, right? If I go to the bottom, there's no way to save it. it just saves the changes as you go along, apparently. And so we're going to go to um, <clears throat> the, the goodbye email. So I did the final welcome email first, and now we're doing a goodbye email. And again, you can let people, I don't know why you'd let subscribers, I don't know why you'd set this here, because this is the unsubscribe form. So this probably really isn't that important for this form. Um, but here you have your checkbox for send goodbye email. So you can turn it on and off from here. Um, this is actually because it becomes an option. So I, I apologize for saying what I did initially. So this is important because it adds it to your different forms. And remember I said, if you make a change in one form, it's gonna make that change in other forms as well. So if I were to turn it off here, it would also turn it off in my, my final welcome email. So you have to make one decision for all of your forms. Um, and this is the same thing as I just showed you as far as changing the colors, um, changing the fonts, all that kind of thing. A lot of it's already set. Okay, So it kept the same things that I set when I did the final welcome email. It just pulled it over to here. Okay, But you'll see it says we have removed your email address from our list. We're sorry to see you go. This is where you can make your changes. So this is where if, if people are unsubscribing because they receive a forwarded email and they're hitting the unsubscribe in that email, unsubscribing the original partner, this is where you would put that message of, um, you know, please do not unsubscribe if you are not the original recipient of this email. Or please do not unsubscribe if you receive this email as a forward from a friend. And then you can explain, you know, please do not do that because you're going to unsubscribe the original sender instead of yourself. Um, you know, please let your friend know that you don't want to receive these so that they stop for you. You don't want to make this really long, but put relevant information here so people know um, whether or not it's appropriate for them to be unsubscribing. Okay. So that's, and that's all there really is to this form. So it's already set up because it maintained the settings that I made in the final welcome form. So the real big thing is turning it on and off. The next thing that we're going to look at is subscribe forms. Or sign up form. Okay. Now again, I switched to sign up form, but it also maintained all the formatting that I did in the other two forms. Okay. So I'm, I'm pointing this out because I, I just want you to really have it in your mind. If I make a change in one area, it's going to affect the other areas. If I randomly changed the, I did this one time to myself. I had changed something and made these white for some reason. And then when I came over here, I couldn't see them. Okay, so it's, it is important to make sure that you keep that in mind that these three forms are connected to each other. Here's the asterisk that we talked about earlier. So in this form, this is the only field that's required is the email address. The, the first name and last name are not currently required. Um, I wanna switch over to the build it phase. 
Okay. So first you can add a message. So you could write something here about if you would like to subscribe to, if you'd like to receive our, our newsletters and updates, please fill out this form. Right, it can be something very simple like that. You could have no message at all if you don't want to. Um, I recommend putting something there. Keep it short. You don't want it to be longer than a sentence. Right? It's just letting people know what they're doing. Uh, email address. Let me move my, my video up here. Okay, so you'll see that there's a whole bunch of different options over here. And all of these are options are things that you can actually add into your form. So you can actually collect quite a bit of information if you really want to. Uh, but be careful with it. You don't want to add, you don't want it to be so lengthy that people aren't willing to fill it out. Okay, so I recommend this first name and last name being required. The reason that I recommend that is because if you get somebody who signs up and they only give you their email address and they haven't used their name and their email address, okay, maybe it's, you know, one of my email addresses is finished work in progress without the vowels. Well, if I sign up with that email address, you have no idea who I am, but I don't also give you my name. So that's why I, I encourage people to require the name because they're, they're already signing to, up to receive your updates. Why wouldn't they want you to know who you are, who they are? Okay, so, so, do we, um, so to do that, you'll notice that, okay, if I hit save field, if I go to add a field, there's all these different lists. If I, it's switching me over to field settings. So I clicked on a field and it flipped me over to, it's not gonna do it this time. I just made it mad. I don't know what just happened. All right. Oh. Go back over here. I'm not sure exactly what just happened. I've never done it before. Um, but we're in the field settings. So I've clicked on the field, and you can tell which field that I'm working in because it has this sort of peach background to it. That's the Jen, one. That we have we have a question. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Um, Nelson Blank wants to know. I've understood stuff so far, but when would what you're doing now appear to folks? The subscribe forms? Uh, good question. Sorry, I meant, to, I meant to talk about that. Thank you for asking. Uh, the subscribe forms are forms that you would use to probably to email people. So you're going to get a link. Um, let me scroll to the top of my page here. You'll see this URL link right here. You can actually share this link with people. So you could put it into your Facebook. You could put it into... Uh, like I said, an email, you could put it onto a web page, um, and then people would be able to click on that link and go to this form. If you decide to use the link, I recommend that you link the text. Um, and so, let me show you what I mean. Um, and we're gonna talk about this a little bit further with flips uh, forward form. So you would copy that URL, write a sentence like this, and then highlight it and use this button right here, and then paste it in. That obviously was not the web address, but you would, you would paste that URL address in there and then say insert, and then this becomes a hyperlink that people can click on. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to, to make one of these buttons. And then when you, you're setting up your button is to put the link here. And then when people click on that button, it'll take them to your subscribe form. So that's, that's one of the ways that you can use it. Um, you can also, remember I showed you the four different kinds of forms that you can have. I talked about the embedded version, the pop-up version, that kind of thing. Uh, you could also use these in that way. And so you wouldn't, you wouldn't have a final welcome form or a final goodbye form as a pop-up. Or, and you wouldn't embed those into like a website or anything like that, or put it on Facebook, on your Facebook page, but you would with this. This is the form that you would want to embed on websites, that you would want to appear as a pop-up, that you would want to uh, include in a Facebook page, that kind of thing. So that's what this form is for. And it allows, it allows the member uh, to sign up for your, for your newsletter. Okay, so that's, that's the purpose of this. Um, so again, I'm on this first name field and I wanna make it required. So I just go over here, hit required field. I don't recommend that you play with this field label, field tag, uh, just leave them alone because if you change them here, it's gonna change them in other places. And you're gonna start messing up your MailChimp system. Okay, so leave these two alone and just click this required field. Uh, visible and hidden means like I don't, this, um, this information at the bottom, TNT connect, greeting salutations, 
since I synced it with MailChimp. All these fields are here, but you'll see that they have a blue, kind of a light blue background to them. And if you look really, really closely, you can see that they say hidden on them. And what that means is I can see them, but nobody else can when they go to the form. Now, if you want to just get rid of the field altogether, if you hit the minus sign and type delete, okay, it'll completely remove it for the, from the form. Um, but that's what, the, that's what this, this visible hidden is talking about. Help task, most people probably aren't going to need help text. Help text is if you have a field that's maybe really unique and people, people maybe aren't going to be sure what to put there. The help text is your way of letting them know what they're supposed to put there. So if, if you don't have anything like that, feel free to ignore it. Um, default, default merge tag value, this is another place that you can set them. Um, and so if you're doing first name and people don't fill out the first name, then they would get this default merge tag value. Again, I would require people, I personally would require these fields to be, I would require them, okay, so that they just get the asterisk. Oops. The reason it's not saving my asterisk is because there's a save field, okay? So you don't save the, the, the changes that you make to the form itself, you don't save, but if you change a field, then you do have to save. Okay, so, so again, just, just kind of try to be aware. I don't understand why MailChimp does all the things it does, um, but just try to keep those, those things in mind as you're going through your form. I would also recommend making the last, last name field required. Again, that's my personal preference. You don't have to do that. Click save field. Um, and so you can add other th information into here. So if you want to collect people's birthdays, you can do that. If you want to get people's physical addresses, you can do that. Uh, and so all I did was click on address and you'll see it added this address field to my newsletter. Now I would go through and, and get rid of these other two um, just because I think it's annoying. But it's a personal preference, it's hidden. People aren't gonna see it. So it's up to you if you wanna stop and delete them. But this would uh, collect people's mailing information. So if you send out your new, some of your newsletters through the mail, or maybe somebody doesn't want to receive email, they want to receive uh, postal mail. This is a way that you can do it. You can also include something like a text or a checkbox. There's some different things that you can do. So if you wanted people, if you want to use this, so this is a MailChimp form. So MailChimp assumes that you want their email address um, because it's an email program. However, if you want to give people the opportunity to say that they want to, they want to receive your post um, snail mail, they want to receive your updates in the mail, not by email, you could set up a checkbox system or a radio button system and set up, and I'm not going to go through this right now, but you could actually set up a field on here saying, select the way that you want to receive my updates. So that is something that you can do if you like. Um, Okay, so and that's all you do. Once you have all that set up, it's done. You don't have to do any of the design part because we already did the design part on the other two forms. Uh, I do want to go back. I do want to show you the forward form um, as a separate thing. I talked earlier, I talked repeatedly about um, how to forward well and not forward well, right? Um, so forward, forward to a friend form. Again, you don't have to design anything because it's, it's picked up the design um, settings and parameters from, from the other forms that we've set up. But this is, I don't know what this is. This is, once this is set up, you don't need to do anything special with it, but I wanted you to see it because this is what you're encouraging people to use. Uh, it's not gonna have, you'll see it has all these merge tags on it. It's not gonna show up when, these merge tags aren't gonna show up when uh, when the form is used. These are, these are examples of help text, okay? So the way that you use this forward, this forward form, is you go, when you're in your, the design phase of your, of your newsletter, um, I would recommend including it as another button. Okay, so we just say, You can put whatever text you want there. This is just an example. Uh, leave it as a web address. And then we want to put the merge tag in here. So it's asterisk, up and down line, all caps, forward, up and down line, 
asterisk. The best of the merch tag, and then I would hit save and close. Okay, and you already know how to, I already talked about how to do all the different button settings, so I'm not gonna go over that here, but you could change the color, change the size, all that kind of thing. Um, and then, when now when somebody clicks on this button, they're actually gonna be taken to that form, and they fill out that form to forge your email. So probably there's a little bit of teaching going on again, right? If you have partners who want to forge your emails, teach them about this. Tell them, please, and all you have to do is something simple. You don't have to sit down with them. You don't have to have a long conversation about it. Just maybe send them an email that says, you know, I, um, I have appreciated that you've shared my newsletter with others in the past. I was wondering if you'd be willing to um, use the forward button in my emails to forward instead of doing it from your email. There's something more clear than that. Okay, that wording wasn't super clear. Um, but, you know, maybe include a screenshot and show them where the button appears in your newsletters. Um, and just ask them to use that. It doesn't take that much longer to send it. They just have to type in the, the person's email address and name, and they have the opportunity to, to share you know, a brief personal message about why they're forwarding it. And then they forward it that way. The, the person who receives it then cannot accidentally unsubscribe the original person, and they have an opportunity to subscribe themselves. Okay, so it's a very helpful form. Um, and that's how MailChimp kind of has their best practice set up for forwarding emails. Okay, so that's how you do that well. The last thing that I wanted to talk about, um, is we're actually about out of time, but I wanted to, to bring up the idea of um, MailChimp Subscribe, which is an app that is only for tablet devices. So it's for, um, it's for like your uh, iPad, it's for Windows tablets, uh, Android tablets, all of those. And it's free in the App Store. So if you go to your Google Play Store, um, Apple Store, I'm not sure what the store is for Windows, but if you just type in MailChimp Subscribe, uh, you'll get this app. You'll be able to download this app. Um, let me show it to you real quick. I won't be able to go into this in a lot of detail because we're, we're about out of time, um, but I do want to show it to you briefly. Um, I'll probably put together a video about this in the near future for people who uh, are really interested in this. Sorry, I'm having a hard time sharing my iPad screen. There we go. Okay. Okay. So this right here um, in the top center, MC subscribe, that's what the app looks like. This is an example one that I've already done. Uh, you're going to have to connect your your MailChimp account to this. So you would, when you're initially uh, setting up this app, it'll ask you for your MailChimp information and it'll ask you what list you want to send it to, that kind of thing. Uh, so go ahead and do that so it links the two accounts together. And then when you want to create a new form, you use this plus sign at the top. And you choose which list you want to send it to. Okay, so this is my actual account. I'm going to choose a test list. Uh, if you have groups and you want partners to be uh, future partners or people who are signing up for your updates to be able to sign up uh, for a group, this is where you can turn that on and give them that option. Otherwise, leave it off if you don't want them to be able to pick themselves. Um, and you can rename it. So if I touch this cogwheel at the top, okay, you can rename it and that changes the name right here. You cannot get rid of the list name. Okay, the list name is going to appear because that's what lists are signing up for but you can't change this test list form 13. You can give that a different name. Then you want to go into edit. Okay, and start tapping on these different areas. So I tapped it on the title and then tap on the, du the double T's and you know, pick branded font is, is Georgia. So I would pick Georgia for this. And then you can change the color if you don't want it to be white. Um, and then this is where you edit the tasks, the little pencil. So this is where you can change it to say something else. So maybe you want to say, you know, I'll sign up for my Wycliffe ministry or Wycliffe ministry updates, uh, Jen's updates, something like that. You want your title. And then when you, you want to click on the section below and again, change the text. So you want to do the exact same process. You want to change it to a branded font, change the color or keep it white. Um, and then edit the text because obviously you don't want it to say, you don't want to say this, right? So change it. You can either delete it altogether or, you know, maybe this says Jen's Wycliffe Ministry. 
sign up to receive monthly emails about what's going on or something like that. Okay, so that's how I would use these two areas. Then we want to tap on this, this area here. And you'll notice that they have the same fields as what I put into my subscribe forms. Okay. And so, mine's actually a little bit messed up right now. But you could change, again, you could change the font with the double T. So I would change this to Georgia. And then this right here will let you pick which columns you want to include. And so again, you have to have the email address. Uh, again, you'll see that I have asterisks by the first name and last name because I want them to be, I want them to be required. You can turn them off if you don't care. Um, if you're trying to get physical address information, um, I don't like the way this is showing up. So I would actually go back to my MailChimp account and change this um, to not have all these different things because I don't know why it's asking for the state but not the rest of the address. So you would actually have to go back to MailChimp itself and change your form settings there for it to change to be different here. Okay, this doesn't this doesn't match the forms that we were looking at earlier um, because I'm using it's linked to a different account. Okay, but this black eye makes it visible or unvisible. Okay, so if I don't want people to see state, I would just turn it off. Same thing with phone number. So I can turn these things off and on. And then click close. Okay, and so now it shows only the fields that I wanted. And you just go through that through the whole form. So subscribe me, I would probably change this yellow color to one of the branded colors. Um, I would change this to Georgia. If you want to say something besides subscribe me, you can you know put submit here or something like that. So you could change the text. And then you can also change this image. Okay, so you know we recommend you click this guy up here. You know, make sure that this is uh, an image that's appropriate for your Wycliffe ministry. Okay, so it can be an image of you and your family. It could be something relevant to Bible translation or something like that. Uh, you can also turn the visibility of that image on and off. So if you don't want the image to be there at all. But then once you've set that, use this check mark to say that you're done. Okay, and then you can also change the background color. So like the color that's currently there is not, it's not branded at all. And so I would use this circle up here to change, change it to something branded. Um, okay, like that. You can put an image in the background. The image takes up the entire background. So be careful that um, if you do something like that, you probably want to get rid of this image. Otherwise, it's going to get kind of noisy. Okay, but you can include some sort of background image. Um, you can move it around your screen a little bit with these three buttons. And then once you've got all that set, click done. And now when you go to show, people are going to be able to use this. So people are actually going to be able to, to type into these fields now and add their information. Okay. And then okay. once they've entered their information, they can actually click subscribe me and they'll be subscribed to your list. Okay. Uh, I know that was a really, really fast run through on how to use that app. Again, I plan to create an instructional video that goes a little bit slower and goes into a lot more detail. Uh, you just don't have the time to do that today. So uh, if you have any questions or need further help, again, feel free to email me directly or email us at pd underscore webinars underscore USA at wicklet.org. Um, Michelle, if you also, if you want to post email addresses into the chat, um, Again, we'll send out the FAQs with the link to the video later today. The link to the video is always the answer to the first question. Um, and then, Michelle, if you'd also share the, um, the survey link. Uh, we'll send those that out to you tomorrow as well. Um, but if you would just take a few minutes to fill that out. Again, this is, this is a new session, so uh, I'm very open to ways that can be, uh, I can approve this or Maybe one of the topics wasn't, wasn't relevant and we should teach something different. Um, we're open to doing those sorts of things. So please do let us know. Um, so. um, a quick comment about the MailChimp subscribe. Now that can gather addresses even offline and then it will upload to your MailChimp account once you're back on, correct? Yeah. Yeah, if you're not, if you don't have access to the internet, you can still, I think you can, uh, you can still use MailChimp subscribe, um, and then when you are reconnected to the internet, you'll be able to upload those to your MailChimp account. 
So one of the reasons that people like to use this is because they, you know, they typically use that handwritten version and then people have messy handwriting and they can't read it. So this kind of prevents that from happening. Yes, Rick, the, uh, the, this is recorded. So it won't be until later today, um, but before the day is over, you will have an email. Okay, well, I don't seem to be getting other, any other questions. Thank you, Nelson. I'm glad it was helpful. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and end our session for today. Again, we'll send this out to you. Um, it won't be until later today because I, I have to uh, go out of town for a little bit. Jen, um, we have one more question here. Yeah. Uh, can you use merge tags in the unsubscribe form to display the email address that is being unsubscribed? No. No, there's, I mean, you can, no, there's no way to do that. You can't use merge tags that aren't already included in the forms. The merge tags can only be used in your campaigns. Now, when somebody unsubscribes, like if, if it was forwarded, so I forwarded it to you, you unsubscribed me, and you went ahead and all the way went through the process, I would get an email saying that I was unsubscribed, correct? Mm -hmm. With the final goodbye. So I would know something was not quite right. Yeah. Yeah, if you're accidentally unsubscribed, typically the partner reaches out. I've had uh, several people email me about that. Yeah, the person who got unsubscribed will know that they were unsubscribed. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks, Kim. <laughs> thanks, everybody, for saying thank you. <laughs> it's fun to get all those messages. Uh, thanks, Allison. I'm excited that you were here. I'm glad that the webinars have been helpful. All right. Well, everybody have a great day, and this is the end of our MailChimp series. We'll have a table talk next week. You're welcome to join us there. Um, see you later. Thank you, Randy.